I often hear people say, I want to lose weight far more often than I want to lose fat. In fact, when I do a keyword search on YouTube or Google, weight loss is far more popular and more often searched than fat loss is. I think it's important to differentiate the two because they're ultimately two different things. So in today's video, we're going to discuss exactly how you can make sure that what you're losing is fat and not just overall weight. So let's get into it. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy, John Mango, and I'm back again representing Beyond the Iron. I drop weekly fitness content on this channel to help you get to those goals faster and more enjoyably. So if you're interested in doing that, subscribe. At the end of this video, I'm gonna go through and give you an example as to exactly how to achieve the steps I'm gonna discuss beforehand. All right, so first and foremost, when we say weight loss or fat loss, the reason the two are different, a lot of people may not realize, but weight loss actually means all types of weight that you're losing in the body and that does mean muscle tissue, water weight, glycogen and fat as well. Of course you could potentially lose things like bone density and other things but typically those are the things we're talking about. In order to isolate and burn fat which is ideal and what's going to make you actually look and perform better versus just losing weight which is typically when people see the number on the scale drop but don't look much different, you essentially have to either build or sustain muscle mass simultaneously. Now it may may sound complicated and it may feel intimidating to some people, but hear me out, it's a very simple process to actually apply and anybody can do so with the four simple steps that I lay out in this video. So let's go ahead and jump in. The very first step, if you want to make sure you're losing fat, looking better, performing better and all of that, is that you want to make sure that you're in a controlled calorie deficit. So in all the other videos I make, you constantly hear me talk about calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is necessary to lose overall fat fat at all, okay? Now, a calorie deficit is a fancy way of saying you're eating less than you're burning on a day-to-day -day basis. However, it's important to note that that calorie deficit should not be too aggressive. This is what you'll typically find in things like crash diets. When somebody is eating way too little, then yes, they're going to start losing weight because they're dropping all kinds of weight, but it's not healthy, it's not sustainable, and it typically leads to people rebounding, binging, and coming back to where they started. So for this reason, you you want to make sure that your caloric deficit is conservative. Typically, that's going to be somewhere between 100 and 500 calories under what you're burning on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you happen to be burning 2,500 calories, you should be eating at minimum 2,000 calories because anything more, sure, you'll see a faster rate of weight loss, but again, it's not sustainable and it's not keeping the long term in mind. And trust me, you will suffer negative consequences such as imbalances in your hormones, low energy levels, your mood's going to be like a hair trigger, all these negative things that nobody wants. Also, you're gonna experience severe hunger. Now, if you're wondering how you can get a good grasp on this thing, obviously, as always, my greatest piece of advice for that is to use your smartphone and track your overall calories day to day to give yourself some awareness and make sure you're within that range. All right, the second step is simply start tracking your workouts. And of course, this is assuming that you are working out in general, uh, and you should be, and it's also assuming that you're lifting weights. If you're just trying to do cardio, you're not going to preserve any muscle because you're not providing the stimulus to the muscle to do so. So you want to make sure that you're doing weight training. You want to make sure you're doing it effectively. And the easiest way to make sure that your weight training is effective is by simply tracking those workouts. That means tracking the weight that you're using on each exercise, tracking how many sets, tracking how many reps. The reason that's important is because every time you go back to the gym, you have a visual layout as to what weights you need to hit for how many reps and sets and so on to maintain your strength. Now, why is that important? Well, very simply put, if you're able to maintain your strength or even build strength as you're in that controlled calorie deficit, it's a very good indication that you're holding on to or even building muscle in the process, which means that the weight you're losing, that number you see going down on the scale is mostly going to be fat. That number three, in order to make sure that steps one and two are yielding those muscle gains or preservation that we want, is to hit 
your adequate protein levels. Now, I've made plenty of videos going into detail about this, but the overall recommendation, a safety point if you will, is to hit somewhere around one gram of protein per pound of your body weight. So, if you weigh 200 pounds and you're starting a cutting phase, you're trying to lose fat, not just weight, then you wanna have your protein somewhere around 200 grams. Now, for some people, their calories, typically females, calories are much lower than can allow for having such a high protein intake. If that's the case, you should be having roughly 40% of your calories allocated towards protein. Of course, protein is very essential to be able to actually preserve that muscle and or build it once again when you're in that deficit. If you're running low on protein, it's not gonna give your body enough to be able to build that tissue. Also as a bonus, having enough protein is gonna keep you more full between meals and it's actually very thermogenic, which means it burns more calories than other nutrients do. And so it's in your best interest to get enough of it. Also a quick side note there is if you weigh, let's say way more than what you're looking to get to, like let's say 50 pounds or more than what you're trying to cut down to, then you should actually be aiming to hit your protein levels for one gram per pound of your ideal body weight. If you weigh 300 pounds, you wanna get down to 185, then you should be consuming roughly 185 grams of protein. Step number four, and arguably the most important to bring this all together is adequate sleep. You see, getting enough sleep or not the right quality of sleep has both been shown to have negative consequences on your body composition. So yes, you will actually have a lower ability to sustain and definitely not build any muscle if you're not sleeping enough or if you're not sleeping well. On the other hand, it's much easier to get stronger, to build more muscle, and it makes it easier for your body to lose fat if you get enough sleep, okay? Not to mention you'll also be able to recover between workouts even better. It's gonna keep your energy levels high and so on. So it's in your best interest and the typical recommendation is somewhere between seven to nine hours. Now, if you want some tips as to how to improve your sleep quality and quantity, check this video that I made out on that topic and you can start upgrading your sleep today. Step number five is going to be monitor and track your progress, okay? So here we're talking about taking your weight daily, tracking your workouts like I mentioned daily, progress pictures, measurements, and constantly tracking your nutrition and tweaking along the way. This is never a one size fits all approach. You must be tweaking as you go because as you start losing fat, as your weight on the scale starts going down, as you're building more muscle, your metabolism is gonna be changing at all times. You wanna make sure you stay on top of that and don't be fooled into thinking that a one-stop shop or a quick five-day meal plan is gonna be enough to take you to the finish line. It's not, it never is. So this is how you can build a sustainable approach. There's gonna be inevitable trial and error along the way, but it is worth it to go through it now as opposed to constantly trying to buy programs or trying the next crash diet. This is the most sustainable sustainable way to do it. So make sure that you're constantly testing, adjusting, tweaking as need be to keep moving forward towards the goal. So that is how you do it. A quick practical example, like I mentioned, I'd be talking about at the end here is I'll give you an example. I've cut down 30 pounds of almost pure body fat. I would say 99% body fat. And how I did this was I had all of my workouts listed and I would make sure that I'm going in the gym every day and I'm trying to at least meet or accept exceed the weights that I hit last time. Of course, maintaining proper form and all that. I took my calories, which was at a starting point of around 31, 3200, and I would cut it down by 200 calories. I took my weigh-ins every single day, and I would take the average week to week to make sure that I'm achieving the appropriate rate of weight loss that I wanted. In this case, I was aiming for one to two pounds of weight loss per week. Now, going at that conservative rate ensures that I'm not under eating too much and crashing along the way and so that I can sustain performance. So I was burning about 3,200 calories to start, so I brought my calories down to 3,000. From there, I was losing by tracking my weigh-ins week to week comparisons, I was losing one to two pounds a week. Whenever I would stall or start to plateau, I would simply retweak my nutrition, bump the calories down another one to 200, sometimes even more, just to make sure that I met that appropriate rate of weight loss. Always focusing on getting in the gym, sleeping enough to recover between sessions, and make sure that I maintain my energy levels. And a very good tip was that I made sure to fill myself up with lots of micronutrient-dense foods. Pears were one of them. Wal 
walnuts, uh, mangoes, uh, ironically, other things like this, foods that are higher in nutrients, okay, not so much calorie dense foods. Of course, you can have those, but just keep in mind, as you keep going through the deficit, the likelihood of being hungrier increases, and so you're gonna wanna make sure you're filling the diet up to sustain those results with more micronutrient dense foods, okay? And that's essentially how I was able to lose 30 pounds of fat while retaining all of my muscle mass and getting photo shoot ready to look like this. By the way, if you're interested in doing the same thing, I wanna offer you a free case study video explaining exactly how you can start implementing that strategy with four keystone habits that I and all of my clients use to lose 25 pounds of fat or more in 16 weeks or less. So if you wanna check that out, check the link in the description below. With that said, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time. If you have any other topics or questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Share it with your friends. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the dislike if it didn't so I can roast your ass. And subscribe if you haven't already because if not, you're gonna miss the video that I'm dropping every damn week. I'm out.